uh, from the Movember Foundation had posted a post talking about how in the last month, 191 Australian men had committed suicide. 191 men like me who live in Australia felt like there was no way they could face another 24 hours as themselves with the noise and the torment and whatever was going on in their head. 191 people decided that it would be better for them and everyone around them if they didn't wake up the next morning. They'll get no judgment from me because I know exactly what that feels like. And I have stared down exactly that same thing on more than one occasion. But it doesn't make it any easier to hear that. And I think it's something that we all need to hear. If you're an Australian man and you are aged between 15 and 45 years old, the biggest threat to your life is yourself. The number one way that men in Australia aged between 15 and 45 die is at their own hand. And we need to talk about this more and more and more and more. And I think one of the other things that we need to talk about, which is inextricably linked to this, which is also kind of ironic since that's what happened to me after I read this and thought about it today, is men and everyone else crying. I have been crying for the last 45 minutes. After I read that and thought about it and thought about my own experience, my own trauma and everything else, I just started crying. And I know how hard that is for people to hear. How hard it is for people, some people, to have other people cry in front of them or even talk about it is really difficult. And it is for me too, actually. But crying is communicating. Same as talking or singing or laughing, shouting. I can communicate a lot of things with crying. I can communicate sadness, sure. But I can communicate happiness. And I can communicate loss and confusion and pride. All of those things I can communicate by crying. But sometimes I feel like I and the world doesn't want me to. You might be like me, that when if someone cries near you, you instantly want to fix it. I want to fix them. Come here and let me, tell me all about it so I can fix it. Here's what you should do. But whatever you should do, stop crying. You know, it's the same as when someone cries and someone gives them a tissue. Like, please use this tissue to do whatever it takes to make sure you stop crying in front of me. Because if you keep crying in front of me, I'm going to have to think about things and I'm going to have to feel things. And I don't really want to do that. So if you could just bottle that shit up and take it somewhere else, that would be great. We do this all the time, especially with men, especially with our boys, with our kids. I do. I say to my kids all the time. As I used to say it more and more, but I'm trying really hard. I say, you know, stop crying. Come here, give me a cuddle. Oh, I know it's terrible. Stop crying. Or, you know... I just tell them with my words and actions, we're not even my words, but just my actions and my feelings that they shouldn't be crying near me. <laughs> I think we've got to stop doing that. You know, stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to cover it up. When did feeling and emotion become linked to masculinity? Why are we so afraid to cry or to talk about crying in front of people? Because somehow our masculinity will be diminished by it. Well, I can tell you that I cry three or four times a week on average, sometimes more on bad weeks, sometimes less. But that's me. You know, I, I'm not a particularly emotional, outwardly person, but that's how it gets out of me. And I'm not going to apologize for that. Because in my work as an ambassador with both the Carers Foundation of Australia and as a Lifeline ambassador. I hear stories and I know things about people that are terrible, terrible stories. 
of people people's lives and how they get on with it resiliently but bottle shit up so much that it affects them forever and ever and ever. And not only their own trauma, then then that becomes this intergenerational trauma that's passed down and passed on. Just because we never front things enough to say, it's out in the open, I'm sad, I'm angry, I want to cry and I want you to just sit there and watch me and listen. Don't try and fix it. Don't try and stop me. Because with the rise and rise of depression and addiction and suicide and domestic violence, we have to ask ourselves, you know, with all the pushing down of emotion, with all the stop, boys don't cry, with all the stop crying stuff, how is that working out for us? Because it seems to me like it's working out pretty rubbish right now. So today, and every day, I will feel everything. I'm going to feel and express my feeling of everything. I'm not going to let my own feelings and emotions be dictated by yours, by the world, by society, by my own dogma, by my own experience and trauma, by my own hiding and my own emotions. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'll probably have another cry today. I hope I have a laugh. I hope I talk. I hope I speak. I hope I sing. I hope I shout. But I'm not going to be afraid of any of it because today is today and it's the last time it will be. So this is me and if this is you, welcome aboard.